Hi guys, uh, today I'm going to do a short video on uh, on airbrushes and specifically the types of airbrush, the difference between them and, uh, and how each one operates. So I'm going to bring the camera in tight so you can actually see the brushes and we'll get right on with that. Okay, the first type that we're going to look at are what are referred to as single action airbrushes. They will look typically like this and will usually be supplied in a kit with a length of vinyl tubing, one end of which screws to the airbrush, the other end of which screws to a cap like you see there and typically you'll uh, receive a can of propellant. Um, in this case this is uh, uh, a Badger airbrush uh, propellant. Um, and it's, it's effectively an aerosol can containing nothing but compressed air. <clears throat> you pull the top off and very much like a camping gas canister you've got a screw fitting lid and the adapter screws onto the canister like so. It has a rubber o-ring seal inside and this little turn dial on the top. Now if I press the air button and screw this in you'll hear when the air starts to come through. As you can hear that there. <clears throat> now I'm just going to release that at the moment and explain to you how a single action airbrush works. Now these are referred to as single action because the only thing you can do is turn the air on or off. Okay, so a little closer up so you can see what's going on. There's the air line in coming from the can of air propellant. There's the trigger which opens the valve and allows the air through. This blows air through this nozzle here. That's the only thing that comes through it. The air blows over this adjustable tube which screws in and out with a spring underneath which brings, raises or lowers the height of this tube. And inside there which you can just see is a plastic tube which is connected to this nozzle. As you can see if I turn that you'll see that turn away with it. And this dips down into the jar which unscrews which you fill with your paint of, uh, of choice. Now these must be set up before you start spraying. Unlike a double action where you can adjust the amount of paint while you spray. With this one what you do is you are adjusting the amount of airflow passing over here that creates a low pressure which then has to be filled so it's a lower pressure than the air inside the jar that forces its way out of the tube which in turn forces the paint up and out that atomizes in the airflow and deposits onto your model just much like an aerosol can would. Uh, once it's set up you can't really adjust this in motion. Some of the slightly fancier single action ones do have a needle adjustment and this portion comes up into the front of the tube. Um, it's quite hard to describe but I don't have one to show you unfortunately. So in theory while you're spraying and holding down the air you could twiddle the needle and fine tune it a little bit. It'd be incredibly fiddly uh, and really quite impractical. But um, in essence a single action airbrush activates air only. This then passes over here draws the paint up and atomizes it. So once that's set you're pretty much stuck with what you have. So you've either set it to a fairly heavy and wide spray pattern which is great for large coverage or you've set it to a fairly fine which is maybe okay for smaller detail but in the main it's very fiddly you can't go from one to the other quite easily. Your gravity feed airbrush looks something like this um, regardless of whether it's an Iwata or a cheap Chinese made uh, brush like this one is which um, which was received with my mini compressor. Uh, what you have is a, um, a tubular body with a paint cup at the top, a nozzle at the front, your air inlet goes in here and you have a trigger. The difference between this and your single action airbrush is like the single action you press down to get air, this starts air flowing up through here and along the nozzle this goes around the outside of the actual paint nozzle and out of the end. What then happens inside is a needle and as you draw the trigger back 
this draws the needle back away from the nozzle allowing paint to flow through. Working on the same principle as the single action, what's happening is it's, it, the airflow is creating an area of lower pressure outside which has to be filled by the higher pressure um, above the paint in the cup. So what happens is the paint draws through, atomizes in the airflow and deposits onto your model or whatever it is you happen to be painting. Now, in this case, these are very, very versatile brushes because you can deposit as much or as little as you want. If you're doing a large project, you're basically pressing down and pulling the needle all the way back so that it's, it's depositing a large amount of paint, atomizing into a larger mist pattern and depositing on your model or what have you. But if you're just doing very small, fine details such as um, a camo line on a model aircraft, you can hold down your air and just draw the trigger back a slight amount and get a very very fine line and um, if, you, if you're particularly skilled with one of these uh, such as some of the artists you see on YouTube videos you'll notice that you can use them pretty much just like a, a pen or a pencil and draw some incredibly fine lines and even write with them I would certainly recommend a double action airbrush um, over a single action any day purely for the versatility aspect the downside, the negative point of a double action airbrush uh, compared to a single action is it's, it's trickier to clean. It's not particularly hard. Once you have a routine in mind and provided you, you clean it thoroughly after every spraying session, it's not a difficult task. It won't take you more than 20 or 30 minutes to clean it thoroughly and then it's ready to use for the next time uh, you want to spray. Um, I do this after every spraying session. That's not to say every, every cup of paint, but every session. So I may have sprayed three or four different colours in one session over the course of two or three hours. Um, flushing the paint through with thinners in between, uh, the gun through with thinners in between rather. Uh, but at the end of that session I will run um, a, a thorough clean through the gun to make sure that it's ready for use the next time I pick it up. The other type of double action is the siphon feed one. Um, now this one comes in a case very much like this one with a glass jar and also with a cup which can be either used for general cleaning purposes which plugs in the bottom or it can also be used for painting you can fill that with paint or what have you uh, the brush itself looks very similar to this one barring the absence of the cup on the top there same principle we press down for air pull back for paint uh, in this one you can actually see the needle a little better uh, without me taking the cap off the other one and you can see as I push back that, that needle draws back. Now the design of this one is, is specifically so that I can undo the chuck nut and draw the needle out without taking this off if I need to so quickly and easily and I can also just pull this to clear a, bo a blockage while I'm blasting air through it uh, something I've never had to do on either one of them but um, a neat little touch. This one also has a cap to cover the nozzle uh, but the nozzle is the same so air flows around the nozzle creating an area of low pressure and it draws the paint rather than gravity through a cup it actually draws it up a siphon tube and through the nozzle but in every other respect it's the same as this one. I've filled this jar with just plain tap water just to show you how um, how this airbrush would work and how adjusting this nozzle here alters the the actual spray pattern now, as I say, you have, you literally, all you have with a single action airbrush is an on off switch. And if I press this, well, you'll see there that you get quite a fine mist spray. As I increase the height, I'm going to try and do that while I'm spraying so you can see the difference. As I increase the height, the flow will get heavier and it will spray more. So, now you can actually hear the difference there. You can see we've got a fine mist going on, and as I increase that, hopefully you can see the actual mist being deposited, the atomized paint, or water in this case, is increasing spectacularly. So hopefully that's given you an idea of how single action airbrushes work. I'm now going to show you the same thing 
with the double action and show you how the double trigger mechanism makes a difference. Or well, you've got your paint in your cup there, um, obviously in this case water. You press down for air. And as you draw back, hopefully you can see the paint, or in this case water, begins to flow. Now what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to rock this back and forth a few times so hopefully you can see the difference um, in the paint flow. Now my first thought when I picked up a double action airbrush was that looks incredibly awkward. You know, you've got to push down a button, then you've got to roll it back and forwards with your finger. It looks really, really awkward. It's surprisingly much more intuitive than you'd expect. And you'll find that um, within a couple of uses, you'll have gotten used to it. And it's really no more tricky than holding a pen. The only thing you'll find, very much like holding a pen, is that you're, you're likely to get hand cramp if you do prolonged spraying sessions from holding and controlling the brush while you're holding and controlling the button.